just like yesterday. I'm a sending and be sending. When we started the band in the early part of the 80s, uh, we moved to London because it was the only way we could get gigs in the capital. They wouldn't give gigs to Welsh bands. And by having a London address in Battersea, it uh, created a subterfuge for us that allowed us to get gigs in the, the Half Moon in Dulwich or the Rock Garden in London. And we got seen early on by U2's agent and he invited us to play at the Lyceum Ballroom of U2 to 3,000 people. It was the last night of their then October album tour. And we were so nervous and we were almost pulled out of the gig. We were that apprehensive about being an opening act. But uh, all the road crew reassured us and said, look, you've got a world-class road crew here. Just go on and give it your all. We're all going to look out for you. And I remember walking out then by this, we started with Shout to the Devil. And then by the second song, we, we were into marching on and the whole place was leaping up and down. And they, all U2's fans took us to heart. And I remember thinking then, well, this is this is the beginning. This is the, this is the real start, and who knows where this could go. Well, whenever I've written a song, my benchmark for it is: Am I going to be prepared to play this for the rest of my life? And because, and it's a cliche, but songs have sort of come from the place where your children come in life. They're of you. You've helped create them or it. In the case of a song, and I, I think you have to be prepared to stand by it for the rest of your life. Um, it's your thoughts and feelings in those lyrics that what you felt at that time is just as valid as what you feel now that might be completely different. And by staying open to the, a song, it can grow with you then. If you just dismiss it and say, I'm never going to play that again, like some bands do, then you, you're not going to learn from your past. And so we, when we come out to play 68 Guns, which we're known for, uh, to when we play it on this tour now, I actually discovered a verse I'd discarded from the song in 1983 and uh, it was in my old lyric book which I hadn't gone back to look at for many years and uh, I found a verse that was ultimately I really believe gave the song its true meaning and so now we have a much longer intro to the song and, and I've added an extra verse and it's quite uh, a powerful moment in the show because the line says if they take our chances we'll create our own and that's ultimately what we've all ways being about as a band is inspiring people to make their own chances in life to uh, to take whatever comes their way and make the best of it in in life when you you're born and that first instinct is to talk and walk and and, th and that instinct never leaves you really it, it just uh, maybe gets suppressed at times or as uh, not as um, prevalent in your day-to-day -day life as it is when you haven't got anything else to think about other than those two acts of life and and when you come down to the, the latter end of life um, then you do think about your legacy and what's going to be left behind and, and uh, for me I, I do want to be um, respected as a musician, respected as a songwriter, people will see that we've left a mark on the world through the music of the alarm uh, but I want to be um, also loved by my kids when I'm gone, you know, I want them to be able to look up to the sky now and again and think yeah I had a great dad and, and we did a lot together and so it's combining all that that uh, is my ambition for myself as, as Mike Peters. I gotta take care.